Lord, increase our faith. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this sycamine tree, be, uproot, be rooted up and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Words we have just heard from the Gospel according to St. Luke. O Tito de At the face of it, it seems none of us has faith at all. If you say you do, look at that whistling pine now and tell it to be uprooted. I won't even try. Or look at our academic block. The hostel has been taken care of. Look at it intently and say, now be renovated. So do we have faith or not? Very often, people take this passage very literally. Jesus could not have been talking about trees and mountains. He must have been talking, bearing in mind the context, about the great obstacles, trees, mountains, blocks, rivers, seas, that prevent us from forgiving and prevent us from drawing nearer to God. And one thing you have to know is that all those trees, mountains, seas are inside you, inside me. Yes. That is the one you, if you have faith, you can uproot. Yeah, this boy, he made him, I will never forgive him. I can't, it's too much. Uh -huh. You are allowing a big tree to grow. A tree of resentment to grow in your heart. And it soon becomes a forest that prevents your smooth relationship with your brother. When Jesus told the apostles, if your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he says, I'm sorry, forgive him. If he does that several times in a day, you must forgive him several times in a day. That was when the apostles said, Let me move back a little. First to the first reading, then to the beginning of the gospel. On the first reading, the beginning of first Paul's first letter, the first beginning of Paul's letter to Timothy, or to Titus. It's Timothy that has to. It's like letter to Titus. He draws up an introduction of himself. Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ. An apostle is one sent, that is, one sent to further the faith of God's elect, the faithful, baptized, and their knowledge in the truth which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised ages ago and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching with which I have been entrusted by command of God our Savior. This is his introduction.
he was sure and clear about who he was and what was his mission. And he says, I'm writing this letter to Titus, a true child of mine in common faith. And he gives him an instruction, very clear one. I left you behind in that island of Crete to appoint elders, overseers. Elders and overseers, presbyters and episcopal, priests and bishop, elders, leaders of the community, of the church community. And he set out some criteria. Why is this reading significant to us? Today I'm a bishop, and he talks about the characteristics of a bishop. It should be this, and this, and this, and this, which means every bishop already, before he's appointed a bishop, should be a saint. <laughs> I should resign, if that is the condition, because uh, I'm not going near. I'm struggling. And I don't know whether they read this with the Holy Father and his advisors read this letter to Titus before they called on me. But in what you need to know is that there is no other special training for bishops apart from the one you are receiving now in the seminary. Some of you may be bishops. Who knows even whether any of you may be a pope. No other training except the preparation that you are given here in the other years of formation in the spiritual year in the senior seminary because you are being prepared or guided to further the faith, to, to, for your faith to be furthered, so that you be stronger in this faith that enables us to do what seems impossible, that is, remove obstacles between us and our brother, between us and God. And in furthering this faith, you have to improve and increase their knowledge of the truth. Nothing destroys faith in Christ as lies, falsehood, and half-truths. Sometimes they are called heresies. And our time today is full of heretics. And heretics are parading, are parading as charismatics. People who are heretics are seen as people who have charisms. And charlatans and fraudsters now appear as great men and women of God. Knowledge of the truth which accords with godliness. The theme of your formation this year about the will of God discerning the will of God making it the source of your joy a Chautaragana seminary fortunately we are making efforts to increase the number of good secondary schools so that those who just want to be well educated well trained as good citizens and good Catholics and go to those schools. And if we have only 10 here, we will spend the time on the people here preparing them to descend their vocation to the Catholic priesthood in these difficult times. And that is why now I come to the first part of the gospel that temptations are sure to come, but woe to the person or persons through whom they come. Imagine people, when will you hear that? Jesus said, it will be better 
for that a millstone be hung around their neck and they be cast into the sea than that they cause one of these little ones. And when they have a good more creek to know what you hear. Are we in the St. John Cross Nursery Primary School or St. John Cross Seminary? I nearly had an idea because I know that for some many parents now, elementary six, primary six no longer exists. They put their children through unnecessary psychological pressure. Casting and why and more for man. Psychologists and child psychologists have studied the process of development of children and graded their education program. In many countries of the world, if a child is not up to six years, he or she will not be admitted into the primary school because it is not possible. And even primary education is so regulated that Time for studies are limited, time for play and games assigned, time for sleep in our place. Cast name one name of my no no elementary four. When we pass exam by secondary school, a common entrance, and another ten years in Bobara University. Giddy 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 at the end. Sometimes Lesson, 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 lesson. No play, no rest, nothing. But exam rule, expo. And what and you find, ask yourself, what is all this? So I, I was when I saw these little children in front of the pews, in the front pews, I was tempted to tell the rector, we have to limit the age of admission for our minor seminary. But I remember there was a debate recently about the age of admission to the university. I said, let us not go there. But we have to be very careful. Many of them could even have a and who ban us leading to sin. Yes, but not only little ones in terms of age or height, but little ones, weak ones in terms of faith. Sometimes these little ones can lead the rector to sin. You think it is impossible? I'll tell you how. Only oh, one father, one priest. I heard he did something terrible. And I invited him. He, was with, he did it with his parishioners in order to check a particular abuse in his parish. He did something that was wrong. I called him. I asked him, Father, I heard you did this. Is it true? He knelt down. Father Bishop, yes, it is true. Even when I was doing it, I knew I was wrong. But in the Kanya, Father Bishop, if you know how Moses felt when he came down from the mountain that made him lose faith in God, that was how I felt. That was what caused me to do that. The Israelites led Moses to sin. My parishioners led me to sin. But he told the Jesus. And he told me what the parishioners did. Many a very. There are things you will do. There is a way you will behave as seminarians. And the director, spiritual director, vice rector, dean of studies will feel that their life is in vain. Their effort is wasted. You think it is not possible? There is something you will do as a child and your father or your mother will begin to doubt. Is this really my child or was my child changed at the maternity? That time, you have become the person leading a little one to sin. And it would, Jesus said, whether you are big or small in size, young or old, if by your conduct you cause another person to sin, you have some consequence attached to it. Severe one. So our prayer is that our conduct should never be an obstacle to others. 
it should be an encouragement to others to do the will of God. And one of the difficult areas of our Christian life is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Some of us make it even difficult or impossible for others to forgive them. Has God sorry? I almost zobrugo ku obaram bato kwashe. He will wrong you and he will claim right and abuse you on top of it. There are people like that everywhere. It requires faith. But on the other hand, remember, Jesus said, if your brother offends you, forgive him. Now, what we see in the world is if your, if your, brother, yeah, if your brother commits a sin, rebuke him. If your brother sins, rebuke him. What we see now is if your brother or your sister sins, put it on social media so that everybody will know. It has become common for people to celebrate the weaknesses and failings and sins of others. Some seminarians may be rejoicing when another person does something grievous and is being punished for it. Some priests may be rejoicing when a particular priest does something very bad and they are the ones to share it among themselves in social media, in their platforms. All our Christians have this temptation. But Jesus said, if your brother sins, correct him or her and they'll say, I'm sorry, forgive him. Whether it is against you, against our community, against the society, against another person, your obligation is to correct and pray for the person. Not to publicize, of course, in a house of formation, you are not, you may have the responsibility of informing some other person. That may be your responsibility. That when he was the auxiliary here, the rector accused him. There is so much indiscipline here. And you don't bring up any names of those who are, but people are coming late. They are making noise. Some are doing this and that. So the auxiliary got very upset. And one day, one of the areas was provision. I don't know if I'm not going to be there. So I'm not going to rule about provision of our sets. We didn't have that rule because we came here, ask him, Mr. We came here after the war, and everybody was looking like a Kwashoko child. So if you had extra gari in your corner, nobody would uh, quarrel with you. And if another person who was hungry came to your corner and took the gari before you to the mud to smoke, you just shake your head and then go away. So we didn't have so much rule. But gradually, as things improved, the rules, the regulation came for self-discipline. So this priest told me that when father complained, the director complained that there was so much indiscipline and provision everywhere, one day he entered the dormitory without telling any prefect, without even telling the second auxiliary. He entered the dormitory and searched everybody's box and caught so many people, including the rector's relation. So, over this general director, I didn't tell you to do it like this. So, but then, what happened? The rector had to suspend all of them, including his own relation. Now we have seen the condition where the action of seminarians could have tempted the rector to sin by saying, okay, this time I forgive all of you because his relations. Have you seen it? You are working closely with him in the rector's office or this, he trusts you, and suddenly you are the person brought up to him for discipline. Don't you know now you have put him into temptation? I'm using this as one example. There are so many others. We are little ones 
so-called little ones can cause bigger ones, be causes of temptation for them to sin. So it is anybody at all who becomes an occasion, a stumbling block, a bait, something that attracts another person to do the wrong thing. That is why we all need to ask the Lord to increase our faith. So that one, we will be able always to help others to do the right thing and never to be obstacles. Two, that we will not even allow ourselves to be guided by the wrong things others do, but to look always on Christ himself as our model. Bishop Michael Energy, servant of God, each time he visited the seminaries, he would ask us, who is your model? And some would say, Bishop, Bishop Energy, you say you are a fool. Your model is Jesus Christ, not any human being. We'll be looking so that you don't take scandal. If somebody gives you scandal, you are free not to take it. You can refuse it, but it requires faith. As we begin this new academic and formation year, we ask for the light of the Holy Spirit. That we, like the saint whom we celebrate today, Saint Martin of Tours, who was a bishop and a monk who lived such a simple life that when he became sick and was about to die, his disciples were crying that he would leave them in the hands of wolves. You remember the story of Martin of Tours with the cloak he caught to, to cover the nakedness or the cold of a poor beggar, only to dream of Jesus wearing that cloak. But all of us, not all of us may be able to cut our cloak in half and give the half to the person who is in need, even though that's what the gospel requires us to do. But what he did at his deathbed, deathbed is a challenge to all of us. The account of his death says that while he was dying, he looked around and saw Satan, the devil, standing at his bedside, and he rebuked him. You blood-stained beast. What are you doing here? You will find nothing of yours in me. Can you say that every day? Can you tell Satan every day, you will not find anything that belongs to you inside me? If you can't say it, go and remove that thing because you don't know whether death will come at this moment. And how do you remove it? Repentance, sacrament of penance, the Eucharist. So let us make use of the possibilities that the church has, God through the church has placed at our disposal, always to renew our commitment to doing the right thing. We pray for faith that will help us remove all obstacles to forgiveness, all obstacles to smooth relationship with our brother, our sister, and ultimately a relationship with our God. Lord, increase our faith.